Hi, everybody. DNA Sports, Dave and Joe, Mike Herrera, genius director, organizer, researcher, the and man. the controls. The man. The man. The man behind the scenes who does a fantastic job. Before we get into our stuff today, we've had a lot of feedback and it's been really positive, but some people still complain about the high elbow hitting theories and the landing on the heel theories and and they still teach that or they don't think there's anything wrong with that. Look, we're not trying to strong arm, mentally strong arm you guys into doing things that, that we talk about. We're not trying to bully you and saying, hey, this is the only way. It's not the only way. However, through years of research, and I've been coaching 31 years, and I've played, and Joe has been playing forever, his whole life, and we've gone through a lot of different ways to hit, ways to pitch, and this is what we found out through research and playing, what is the best way to teach youth sports, youth baseball players, starting from ages 10 on up. So we have kids coming in with us uh, that we help in college. I had a kid today at a high school that is a top-notch high school, has won a state championship, but they don't teach nuts and bolts and detailed stuff like we do. Our kids at our high school, second nature to them, he didn't even know what we were talking about. So uh, that particular high school has a lot of talent, but they just throw the ball out there and say, hey, go compete. They don't break it down like we do. And this is what we're talking about. We're not, we have gone through a lot of different ways of teaching pitching and teaching hitting, teaching defense. Deep, and um, you don't have to do what we tell you to do, but it's been researched. It's been verified and validated by uh, guys who teach in the pros, guys who teach in college. It's not something that is new, but it's something that we believe in. We, we, we know a lot of different ways how to teach hitting, a lot of different ways how to teach pitching, and we just present it to you. Yeah, I mean, it's something that we believe in, something that we've had success with, something that just makes sense to us. And of course, we're going to come off like it's the only way because that's our personality. So we're going to be strong as shit probably till the end with the way we say things. So with that being said, do what you want with the info we give you, but we're going to give it to you the way we know best. Right. And we've seen a lot of stuff that failed, not only stuff that, that works, but stuff that's failed. And we wanted to show you what works and what doesn't work, the right way, the wrong way. And you can't be stubborn about teaching kids. Especially American kids. And I think the best part, though, when, when people like it and share what we do and they comment and say, oh, this is good stuff, or, you know, maybe they mention a friend who could use the info, that's great. But I really do like when people disagree because maybe we can get into a dialogue and, and learn something that we right. didn't know or, or just understand what's the disconnect in the in realms of the baseball world, you know? So it's nice when people say this is wrong, but... As it wrong, so like it's awesome when people just connect and comment and, on stuff, so we can figure out. And maybe we can yeah, educate each other, but most likely, I mean, education is not a bad word. Yeah. Okay, if if you're willing to be educated, if you're willing to be taught, you'll be a better coach. Now, I just I just got cut off by saying American kids because I think American coaching has gone downhill. And it's shown in the big leagues with a lot of, you know, a lot of players from Japan, Dominican Republic, Venezuela, Puerto Rico, Mexico, taking a lot of American spots. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, it's like they just go up. But the whole point is they just go out and play. And you were talking about before we came on camera, all the fancy stuff that these guys play with. And basically they're the, they're the Hispanic players from another country and they just play and they don't, they don't need anybody around them teaching them. They get taught when they get here, 
by when they get signed by a professional team. Mm-hmm. And, and I think a large part of that, too, is that they've played so much that they've indirectly found the right way to do something because over and over again, they have saw the repeated result of, of like a successfully hard hit ball develop good mechanics. The negative of them is yeah. I don't think they go to school much. Yeah. But they play baseball all the time. And their whole goal is that the guys that, 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 that play baseball all the time, they want to get signed because they want to make the big money here. But when they come here, they get smoothed out. There's a lot of great coaches in professional baseball. I mean, and if you had your choice of going to college baseball or professional baseball, you should go to professional baseball. Those guys are pros, and they know what they're doing. Yeah. I got to say, though, I'll stop you, though, when you say American coaching, because that's just a buzzword now, because it's non-existent, and that's something I feel pretty strongly about because of the way we feel strongly about, you know, the travel baseball bullshit and... Um, just coaches being out there for fun, which I appreciate it because if they didn't do it, who else would at least, but there, there's got to be better standards like we talk about. But before we went on camera here, you know, we were brainstorming about coaching and, you know, just to put some things in perspective, right. We had coaching in the center here and we threw out some buzzwords and some obvious ones that you might think are obvious are not so obvious to Coaches in America, that's why I wouldn't call it American coaching. I'd call it American babysitting. But we go from coaching to teach, right? That's pretty obvious, right? From teaching, we go to develop. We have organization, execute, manage. We have um, develop, adaptable. This is, these are things that you don't see in American coaching. So um, when, when I... When I say that, I mean, there's, it's not coaching. And, and so we indirectly define these things. We define what coaching is with 10 different words, and we don't see it today. So that's, that's just an issue in itself. And what we talked about off camera is all those terms would be basically in a certification program. And I think in this country, coaches need to be certified. Mm-hmm. I mean, they need to go through programs, not just good intention coaches that, hey, you know, or that their kids playing, but kid, coaches with good intentions, but really don't have the background to coach. We need all the coaches to go through a certification program. And that's something that we're trying to develop over our network. Yep, 100%. So with that out of the way. And, we'll, and when we have the program ready, it, it certainly will be on the website and all our other social media because I think it's really important for especially coaches that, are, especially kids that want to get into coaching, not just adults that pretty much set in their ways, but, you know, people that can't play, but they want to coach and want to be in sports. This is perfect for them. Yep. Absolutely. All right. You got anything else on that? No, I'm good. Nice. All right. So with that out of the way, we want to talk about today PFP. So for anyone who doesn't know what that term is, that stands for pitcher's fielding practice. And this is something that is critical to baseball because I've witnessed games be blown uh, on a pitcher's inability to field their position, as well as um, being on the other end where games are won, on my side at least, because the other pitcher can't field their position. So... Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the importance of that and why being a pitcher doesn't necessarily mean being a pitcher because after the ball's released, you're a fielder and there's no ifs, ands, or buts. If someone has a swinging bunt, it's your responsibility to make a play and you need to become an athlete once you get that mound. Anything on that? Well, this particular year, we had problems fielding pitchers and we always make it a priority to work with pitchers and if you watch if you watch pro pitchers that start spring training that's all they do pfps pfps and you watch the film you know of of the 10 o'clock news they always show the pitchers fielding position and they do that all the time but it's so important in high school to make sure that they learn this because it's not natural for them for example when there's a play to the first baseman 
and it's not natural for the pitchers to go over and cover first base. So you got to bang it into them. And this particular year, we had trouble throwing the ball to first base on comebackers. And it started with one pitcher, and it was like a virus. And then every pitcher couldn't do it. It was like watching a million John Lester's who can't do that either. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's kind of sad to watch. It's in his head. But uh, we lost, basically, we lost in the city playoffs because I wouldn't say he's our best pitcher, but he was one of our two best pitchers. We had a pickoff play at first, third base. We had him run it all year. And I thought he was good enough, but since we didn't practice it, he stepped off and threw the ball down the third baseline and two runs scored, which made it three to nothing early in the game. We eventually tied and went ahead, but those two runs never should have scored. And that's, this is an experienced pitcher who thought he knew how to do it. All he had to do is, like, as a, as a right-handed pitcher, he didn't have to step off. All he, all he had to do is... Not cross his leg and throw the ball to third base. We had the guy picked off. But no, he steps off and throws the ball right in the dirt, something we never practice. Stepping off at third base, we never practice that. He did it on his own, and it cost his team two runs because that particular kid was not coachable. He thought he knew it all. And that's another thing about pitchers. Pitchers are headstrong, and we have to bang it in their heads that comebackers throw the first base. I've seen so many throws starting a double play of comebackers at second base. I've seen throws on bunts going going to third base, down the third base line. I've seen bad throws going home where you can just underhand a ball for a force play or or just throw it for, you know, the, the start of one, two, three double play. It's horrible because, you know, a lot of these pitchers are specialists and they're not athletes. Yeah. Okay, so you have to teach them how to feel. Yeah, and that's, a lot of them are good. That's the thing for me. One of the biggest pet peeves is the ball hit down, you know, the first or third baseline where they have this need. I mean, I understand the need, but they have this need to rush, right? They get to the ball very fast. They, who knows if they have a good grip on it, and then they turn and throw off balance off their back leg. And I guess the biggest pet peeve for me is, where are you going outside? I mean, and, I, and I've told this to you before, I don't think anybody should – do anything outside of the means of their body. So, like, if you throw right. 80, right. you throw 80. Don't try to throw 80. Right. I mean, the occasional. Yeah, you've always talked about the hazards of overthrowing. Yeah. yeah. And, and even even though within your body, right, if you're not good at turning a double play as a shortstop, you shouldn't try to move faster than you can. Right. Obviously, that it, that's not a good thing that you can't turn a quick one, but you need to do it over and over until your body chooses, and along with your mind, to move quicker. Well, right? You can't just say faster and then it goes faster. Yeah, or to do it at his there's, speed as, I, as yeah, well as he could possibly I mean, do it. There's, yeah, exactly. Do it at your fastest speed. Right. And, and when you try to do it faster than you can do it, that's when you make errors. That's when your mind and your body, they're not on the same page. You can't just say faster and it happens fast. It's a combination of your mentality, your your coordination, your rep, your repetitions. Yeah. And so I guess my biggest thing is when the ball's on the line, the pitcher needs to understand that their job isn't done when they let the pitch go. Their job is done when the play's over. Right. And then there's another play. But you also have to, like, okay, bunt coverages. You have to make sure you do, do them the right way because particular bunt coverages, if you're not, if you don't get off the mound in the right manner, you're going to cost your team a ball game. And back in, I think it was uh, our first super sectional team, we were facing a team, and the pitcher would go directly to the third base line, not come at the ball, the batter first, to cover that area before the guy put it down. So one of our hitters figured that out. So it was a bunt situation, and the pitcher threw it, and he, he ran to third base. Our bunter just bunted it right at the pitcher's mouth, and it turned the whole game around, and we ended up winning easily, but it was a close game, and it rattled the pitcher so much, and again, a fielding play rattled the pitcher, and then right after that, double, single, double, game over. Just because he didn't, and it rattled him. Yeah, it's huge. And, and also right. because you're, you're the one in control of the game. So if you're out there blowing the game, now in terms of your mentality, making that next pitch, it's not the easiest thing. Because if you're an outfield and you make an error, you got a lot of time to shake that off. 
Yeah. Right. But it's yeah. required of the pitcher to make that next pitch and make yeah. it make a good one. So and it was kind of funny because the next time up, he stayed there. Yeah. The pitcher was still in the game and he stayed there. And the third baseman charged arm charged hard. And it was the same guy up the bat who butted the ball hard over the third baseman's head and he got a double on a butt. <laughs> the score ended up being nine to two or something like that. But it was just funny because they made the changes, but they were the wrong changes. Yeah. But that's that that has to do with coaching. So that's that's another story. But we'll get back to pitchers fielding. And really on a youth level, especially the high school level, it's so important to keep on doing that because watch pitchers try to make throws to second base too. I mean, okay, you feel and it's a longer throw and you have to throw over a mound. So it's tough. Or moving your feet. And again, if your feet move too fast, like you're saying, you're going too fast, you know, a bunt play at third base, they could spin and throw the ball down the left field line. And then, you know, some pitchers just aren't good fielders. Yeah. I mean, if off the top of my head, if I have to give any fielder, not even just a pitcher, mainly for pitchers, because fielders should know this generally. I mean, it, it starts right here. One, ball first. So don't. Don't think about throwing if you don't have the ball, because sometimes you're gonna you're gonna go to pick the ball up and you don't have it. So I would say ball first. The second thing I would say is your feet. Yeah. The third thing I would say is turn glove side. Yeah, absolutely. Turn gloves. Yep. Well, ball first. We, maybe ball first, glove side. Move your feet, and the fourth you thing know I would rule. say is fingers over the ball. Yeah, fingers over the ball. And that's it. Four, well, you know the rule. Legs. It was it was really ridiculous, you know, in the pros it's different, but when there was a pop up at the mound, when you were pitching, you were the you were a center fielder. So why would I have anybody else come over and you're saying third base or first base? You're standing there yeah. and and as an athlete and as an outfielder, anything in front of the mound was yours and that's what you did. You know, mm -hmm. it's like you saved us a ton of runs and there was a couple other guys on your particular team. That were outfielders, so you just let them take it. It's all common sense. Yeah. You know, I'd rather have outfielders catching a ball than third baseman or first baseman. You know, they might not, they're not the quickest guys on the diamond, and the shortstop and second baseman are playing deep. Why not have our best outfielder who's happened to be pitching catch the ball? Yeah. Yeah, that's common sense. Common sense, and then you guys also made great throws at second base because you're used to throwing the ball from center field. So it was easy, and you guys were always accurate. And you know, when we made that a priority, there was hardly any errors, but there's so many teams that don't make PFPs priorities. Yeah. And, and PFPs take a long time in practice, so it takes up a lot of your practice time. And so some coaches would rather just hit and just get out of there. I would rather do the defensive stuff because it saves games at the end. Percent. And you know what? I I don't know what, what it is, but just doing defense, I feel like breeds discipline. It just makes kids, I feel like. I agree. It, and, and doing defensive drills and, and making it. it it's uh, the nitty gritty oh, of, it's, of a sport. It's, it's great. Offensive, defensive drills, when you can incorporate both, like when you have, oh, okay, you know, guys running the bases or a live drill where it's PFP, it, it's fantastic. And maybe it's everything that surrounds sports. <clears throat> I mean, what does everyone care about? They, they care about defense when it's a pick six. Or a fumble recovery for yeah. for a touchdown, but other than that, they care when a touchdown scored, right? It, in baseball, they care they care about a home run or a, a double for an RBI, anything on offense. But the defense is the nitty gritty, and so when you really hammer that home with with the team, and they can play defense well, and they, the offensive stuff's gotta come, right? But you can't win a game anyways without. But defense. what happens? What happens when the offense isn't there? Then you have yeah. to like, you know. For example, okay, you have we, we, yeah, we have bunt scrimmages where the pitcher's involved, okay? So now you're in a nitty-gritty game, like you're saying, okay, and we make all these plays to stay in games. And then we, we punch out a run or two, and we won the game because of defense, but we win the game 2-1, to 1-0 one, one to because, you know, we made all these plays and then scratched out a run. And that's, to me, that's the fun part of baseball. When I, yeah. when I see guys run down balls and gaps or pitchers make great plays and turn double plays or catchers throwing out guys at second base or great stretches by the first baseman, just great stuff like that. Like Adam Engel the other night, he's a center fielder for the White Sox. He made an absolute unbelievable play going over the wall to uh, make a, 
take a home run away from Brian McCann uh, of the Houston Astros. It was a fantastic play, but there's other great plays besides that. It's like th throws to third base, great cut plays. But there was a great cut play today at the Sox game. So uh, to take Houston out of an inning. So anybody could do it. The Sox are the worst team in base, but waste worst team in American League. Yet they did that to the Astros because they work at. Yeah. All right. Little League World Series, Joe West, umpire situations. You talk about Joe West because to me, he's an arrogant fat ass and he's yeah. a bad umpire. I mean, he's technically a, a decent umpire. He's got a good strike zone, but he, he gets caught up in all the, the bullshit around him. And, yeah. you know, he, well, I guess he, he's the show when he's there and he, it's kind of irritating to watch him umpire. If he just fucking up, he would be good, but he doesn't. He's got a big personality, and this latest thing where he got suspended for three days, he should have been, you know, he should have been sent, suspended a long time ago. Yeah, and that's my thing. I don't, I don't have much to say on him. I just, we we're kind of talking about the umpires in the Little League World Series, and I've been in the news. And my, my thing with him is, it's not, it doesn't really matter the way players act or play. It's your job just to call the game. Even if a player's out of hand and you throw him out or something, it has, has nothing to do with how you think of him as a player or anything like that. Your job is just to be an umpire. You don't show. Nobody cares if you show up about your personality or anything. Right. And anything you have to say. Not that you're not important as a person, but you get paid to call the game right. Like you said, he has a good. You think he has a good strike zone, stuff like that. Umpire characteristics. Show up and just do your job as an umpire. You've that, heard that, a lot. That's how you got to where you are. Yeah, you've heard a lot of the comments when you know an ump uh, there's a good, the game is being umped the right way when you don't even notice the umpire. Yeah. And, and you know the other even besides Joe West, Angel Hernandez sued Major League Baseball for not including Hispanics in the playoffs more okay and they therefore right before the all-star game then they gave him an all-star assignment maybe it was already like uh signed before he made came out and sued these guys yeah. it's not that he's hispanic he's the worst umpire in baseball and he's a, he's a guy that he holds grudges against players he's got a terrible strike zone and he thinks he's above the game and it has nothing to do with the fact that he's Hispanic. He's just a crappy ump. Yeah. So, I mean, some of these guys are just clueless. And Joe West, um, you don't need to say anything about Adrian Paltz, right? Which, that's pro-ups. Now, let's talk about watching Little League. Watching the Little League ups. Which, I, which I actually, I know you dislike it. I actually enjoy watching some of the kids play. I think some of them have some, have some talent. So and to, like when I see a twelve year old with pretty good mechanics as a pitcher, I'm 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 fascinated. I'll tune in for a little bit. But now where you're about to head, that that pisses me off as well. Okay, but, well, little league baseball. A lot of people don't know this, but the teams that are organized are not teams that play together the whole year. This is these are all star games. Yeah. These are all star players. Okay, they're. They, they practice for a little while, and they're not like the league champion of a certain league. They're not house league champions or travel league champ, whatever it is. Okay? So that's one thing I don't like. Yeah. But the other thing I don't like is watching on TV and then hearing from a player that played at Cooperstown. We had a practice today, a workout, and this 12-year-old kid whose brother plays on my team, he said, I couldn't swing at half those pitches because there were seven balls off the outside corner. So therefore, I swung at the first pitch I could because I know I could not hit what the umpires were calling strikes. And I watched it on TV. It's absolutely true. It's either the ball's too low when they call a strike or seven balls off the outside corner. I can't watch it. It's such garbage. <coughs> Do they want to speed up the game because it's on TV? Yeah. I, I mean, I, and these kids aren't even fully grown. <coughs> and the kids look back at him and said, are you nuts? That's not even close to being a strike. And they, they can't say anything back to him. But I've seen kids look at him. That's not a strike. And it's not a strike. Yeah, well, it's ridiculous because the plate 
helps define the strike zone. And they, it's like they don't use the play. Right. And first of all, these kids are getting so big now, and I swear half of them look like they're 15 years old. Yeah. Okay. But <laughs> that's true. Okay. They've always been. It's always been. I, I think the mound is 46 feet. I think it should be pushed back. Okay. And give these batters a chance. If you really want to make Little League more fun, first of all, put it, make them, make them hit with wood bats. Yeah. Like either, either push the dimension of the field to more of a right, right league right. field or make them. Pop flies or home runs over yeah. center field. You know, it's like, like okay. Hit with wood, which would be interesting. And also you see like who really has talent too, because. No, you, who's you, really you coached? Yeah. Who's really coached? Who's yeah. really coached to hit the ball at the barrel of bat? Because you These guys way with errors. Um, no, no. Head. But, you know, hit the ball off the barrel of the back. Now, you get away with, you know, sloppy mechanics with aluminum because, okay, you hit it off the handle, you hit it out of the ballpark. Or you hit it over, you hit a line I mean, track. how big field. some of these kids are. Some of these kids are bigger than myself. Yeah, they are. I mean, they're okay, they're so big now. Push the mound back to like 50 feet or 48, whatever. But give the batter a chance and, and shrink the strike zone. And you have a directive with the umpires or make them go through certification or clinic because these guys are garbage. I mean, the play, I haven't seen one good plate umpire in the last couple times I've watched. Now that you bring it up, though, it makes me wonder if they're directed to do that, you know? I think they are. Wait, I think they yeah, speed the game up, I mean, okay? The, game, the games are kind of quick. I mean, they're only six innings, and they're kind of quick already. Yeah, well. Maybe they're directed to do you that. You know, you're, but... you're, you're, over ESPN, it's a two-hour time slot. Six to eight. Okay, yeah. get it in there. Because we have we have we have uh, programming after that. But the shitty part about that, then, aside from these kids, I mean, these kids are already good, like you said, they're all star teams. But aside from that, then what what is this? Then is it just a business, like you're saying? You know? Yeah. Like you're gonna just call these kids out? So yeah. It's a ball. Yeah. How much do you think that when when these teams get there? You think they're getting subsidized? I mean, you know, ESPN's a multi-million dollar organization. You think they give inducements for kids who get to Williamsport? I think so. I hate to be a cynic about it, but I, I would think that Jackie Robinson got money when they were the, 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 the cheating dream team. So, you know, they, you know, and then they got, they got all this backing, said, hey, you know, these poor city kids, they knew what they were doing. And that's a whole different subject. But yeah. They knew what they were doing. They wanted to stay together. And they knew that they were all over the place. They were in the suburbs. It was a running joke that three ki- only three kids were from Chicago, from that area. Yeah. So, you know, so if, if Jackie Robinson did it, you don't think other teams have done it all over the country? Just cheated their way just to get in a championship game because I think there's I think I think it's financial. I think I really I really do I think it's financial. I hate to be cynic about it, but hey, what's pure now in sports? Yeah, I mean, please. And how rare is it to get a group of kids from one area to actually right. go that far? Right. I mean, the Illinois representative is Hinsdale. They're playing for the championship game uh, Saturday. And- rich kids yeah but it's like what are the odds of one area in a, a section of a country is going to be an international team? you know what i mean yeah i mean it's, it's, of course they're speaking gonna... of cheating and just look at the japanese teams i want japanese i don't know guys you know it's a big deal for them to come over. It has to be financial. I mean, yeah. and they're always in the championship, and they always look like they're way more advanced. And then they're so disciplined. Yeah, but ten years later, I don't see them in the big leagues. I mean, how many Japanese players are in the big leagues? Yeah. So I mean, a lot of them play over there, but they're not good enough to play here. Yet our kids are. Yeah. Some so of our kids. Some of our kids, yeah. <laughs> some of our kids that are very small off. percentage. Yeah, but then all the kids, you know, you don't see these big. Venezuelan teams there, but a lot of Venezuelan players in the big leagues. Yeah. So they, they don't need that. Really? Oh, it, it, you're right. It just, it's just a, it's one more part of programming that makes a ton of money. Yeah. And they sell it at, oh, and they these, really, they these really kids. sell the very few guys in the MOB that played in the little league. Right. Like Todd Frazier. Yeah. 
but you, you they sell it. You know, these kids are all 12, you know, and they, they work hard and, you know, look at all the coaches. That's all bullshit. Yep. And, uh, some of these kids, 13 or 14 years old, you know, I, I, they fudge on, on birth certificates. I'm sorry, be sinning. Prove to me that it's, it's not rough. Great. Yeah. Well, especially with how, how good all of these kids are to get to the championship of your country and then go to the championship of the, you know, the world. Yeah. I mean, I, I never saw when I was, I was, when I played Little League on the South Side, never saw kids that big. They were all 12 or 13, you know, or they're, they just, they just turned 13. I never saw kids that big, like ever. I never saw a kid over six foot until I got to high school. Yeah. And now look at these guys. Oh, well, this kid, one kid's like 5'2 and 225 or something. That Boo Powell. There's a, <laughs> there's a Boo Powell there or something in, in, in the American playoffs right now. And I, I, he might have an obesity problem, but I guess he's a pretty good player and he hustles his ass off. Yeah. But I haven't seen him play. But yeah, some of these kids, six foot uh, one, 175. What? I don't think I've ever weighed 175. Yep. That's funny. That's a Little League World Series. There you go. I mean, hey, enjoy it if you want to. All right. What else we got? I think we're good for today. Got any complaints or comments from anybody? Uh, uh, you have you have something? No, that, I got uh, a, a, I had a shout out to somebody who watched one of our YouTube videos. I think it was episode 12. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I really enjoyed the video. I think his name was Russell. Shout out to you. Thank you for your comment. I mean... Said he's going to use our video, show it so to his team. So he was a coach of a program? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what it seemed like. He's going to use our video, show it to his team. We appreciate that. We appreciate you commenting. Um, any feedback is worthwhile. That's awesome. Us. That's awesome. And again, we're not trying to, we're just trying to help improve the product, uh, make it great. And, you know, just like when we were growing up and we idolized all these guys and uh, they played the game to make us baseball fans. And I think we get away from that sometime. Dave and Joe, episode 14. Thanks to Mike Carrera. We'll see you next time.